All that's left to do now is just to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here we've got 1 over 32 pi a naught raised to the power of 5. We have this term in terms of r, and so we have e to the negative capital R over a naught times minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 4 times capital R minus 12 a naught cubed capital R squared minus 4 a naught squared capital R cubed minus a naught capital R raised to the power of 4 and from that we're going to subtract off e to the power of 0 times minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 minus 0 minus 0 minus 0 minus 0 because these other four terms they're just multiplied by some function of r which is going to be 0 in all those cases. We then have our term in theta well in that case that's negative cosine cubed pi over 3 minus minus gives me a plus cosine cubed 0 over 3 and then finally we have our final term our, our phi and that's just evaluated between 2 pi and 0 and so if I simplify all of these terms what we end up seeing first I'll look at these cosine cubed terms but the cosine of pi that's equal to negative 1 and so negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 taking care of the cubed is still negative 1 but then this negative sign ends up making that term positive 1. Cosine of 0 is 1 and then 1 times 1 times 1 because I've got a cubed is also equal to 1. So in this case this term ends up being 1 third plus 1 third which is equal to 2 thirds. This term here is just going to be 2 pi because it's 2 pi minus 0. And then we know that this e raised to the power of 0, well, that just goes to 1. So the only thing I'm going to have left over is minus minus 24a naught raised to the power of 5 or plus 24a naught raised to the power of 5. So taking all of that into account, I can then write 1 over 32 pi a naught raised to the power of 5. And I have 2 thirds times 2 pi. So that gives me a 4 thirds pi. And to that I'm going to also be multiplying e to the negative r over a naught minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 4 times r minus 12 a naught cubed r squared minus 4 a naught squared r cubed minus a naught r raised to the power of 4 and to that I'm going to be adding 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 and so my final simplification here will just be that I can cross off the pi on the top and the bottom here and I have my 4 thirds times 1 over 32 which in this case leaves me with 1 over 24 a naught to the 5 and then that's going to be multiplied by e to the negative r over a naught times minus 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 minus 24 a naught 4 times r minus 12 a naught cubed times r squared minus 4 a naught squared r cubed minus a naught r raised to the power of 4. And to that I'm still going to be adding this 24 a naught raised to the power of 5 term. And so again what we've just calculated is if I scroll back up here it's basically this picture where we have our 2pz orbital which is what I've got outlined here in green and this orbital this dumbbell orbital is basically a representation of where the electron can live in space and that if we were to draw a circle of radius r or a sphere of radius r we're trying to calculate what is the probability of finding the electron within that sphere and that's essentially what we've calculated here so if we wanted to then say what is the probability of finding the electron within a sphere of radius of a naught being the Bohr radius 
So what is the probability essentially of finding the electron within the Bohr radius or only at maximum the Bohr radius away from our nucleus? Then we would write a statement that would say probability between zero less than or equal to capital R, which is less than or equal to the Bohr radius. Well, now we're just going to substitute in for anywhere that we see capital R. We're just going to write A0. So that's 1 over 24 A0 raised to the power of 5 times e to the minus A0 over A0. And then we have minus 24 A0 raised to the power of 5 minus 24 A0 raised to the power of 5 minus 12 A0 raised to the power of 5 minus 4 a0 raised to the power of 5 minus A0 raised to the power of 5. And to that we're still going to add 24 A0 raised to the power of 5. And so here I just simplified all of these terms immediately because in any of these terms from above we can see that I've got A0 cubed R squared so that gives me an A0 raised to the power of 5 when I substitute an A0 for, for any R term. Same thing goes for this, this fourth term where I've got an A0 squared times R cubed if r cubed is equal to a0 cubed, then a0 squared times a0 cubed, well that gives me a0 raised to the power of 5. So that's how I get an a0 raised to the power of 5 in all of these terms. So now because I have an a0 raised to the power of 5 term in all of these terms, and I have this 1 over a0 raised to the power of 5, when I multiply that 1 over a0 raised to the power of 5, when I distribute it through, it basically cancels out all of those a0 raised to the power of 5s. Additionally, what I can do is that I can say, well, this is e to the negative 1. I'm going to multiply that by, well, the addition of minus 24, minus 24, minus 12, minus 4, minus 1, which is equal to 65. And to that, I'm going to be adding 24. When I multiply in that 24 into this, this addition that I have, then what I'm going to get is... 1, and sorry, that's minus 65. I would get 1 minus 65 divided by 24 times e. And if I were to write that into decimal form, what I would get is 0 0.00366. Or I would have a 0.366% chance of finding the electron within one Bohr radius of the nucleus if it's in a 2pz orbital. That's a very low probability of finding that electron, which means that the electron then lives most of the time more than one Bohr radius away from the nucleus, which makes sense only in that we're talking about orbitals that are now starting to be more diffuse and more away from the nucleus as we move higher in energy levels. As n goes higher and higher, then we expect the electrons to live further away than when they're in lower n um, states. And so this follows with that, that trend that we would expect.